he, he loved it and he wanted to buy the script. So um, uh, the agent said, was deliriously happy. Uh, he said, uh, Clint, he read it in three days, exactly three days. This is no exaggeration. He read it in three days. Um, I don't know how long it took me to write it. It wasn't very long. I was working very quickly, uh, thanks to Joanne. In any event, she, <laughs> um, I said, I don't want to sell it. And she said, and the agent was aghast. He said, what do you mean? I said, I, I want to direct it. He said, you really want me to tell Clint Eastwood you're not selling him your script? And I said, yes, but I'll sell it only if he lets me direct it. Well, Clint was just, he, he became, he was laughing so hard when he heard this. He said, I want to meet this kid. Who, who won't sell me his screenplay. So William Morris and Joanne arranged for me to go to Warner Brothers and meet Clint at his office. And I walked in and he, he wasn't there yet. And he has, still has the same office, it hasn't changed. Everywhere is dust, a little old upright piano in the corner with a glass that's probably been there for 30 years with an inch of dust all around it, very simple. And he's never changed. He's still the same person he was uh, then, now. Um, he's just a wonderful, wonderful guy. And I was waiting for some limousine to show up. Instead, a dirty old Chevy pickup truck, faded green pickup, really horrible green color, pulled up, beat up old Chevy. And out comes Clint, and he had an old T-shirt and jeans and work boots on, and he came in and, and uh, he had that smile on his face that he has in all the, all the movies you've seen him in. And he looked at me and he smiled and he said, so you think you can direct me? I said, yes. He said, well, what makes you think you can direct me? He was laughing the whole time. And um, I said, I don't know, I just do. And he was amused that this kid was saying to the biggest star in Hollywood, he was number one in the box office for two years in a row, uh, was saying, I, want to, I can direct you. So he, <laughs> he, said, um, he said, well, I'll tell you what, I'll make you a deal. I said, what's the deal? He said, um, I'll let you, I'll buy your screenplay for scale which is the lowest amount of money you can pay. And I'll let you direct the movie for scale, which is also the lowest amount of money you can pay. And uh, he said, on one condition. I said, what's the condition? He said, if I don't like what you're shooting after three days, then you're gone and I take over and I direct the movie. He said, do you agree to that? I said, sure. So he, he laughed again because he couldn't believe I was making this bet with him. So we went, uh, I, I met Joanne again. We went to William Morris, who was my agent and his agent at the time. And we told him about the conversation. And my lawyer uh, had come in from New York and he had no knowledge of movies or anything. And he said, don't, don't do it. Don't make this deal. You're crazy. This too, you know, you can get millions for the screenplay. And... Uh, I said, Joanne kept saying, but, you know, it's a chance to work with Clint Eastwood. And he didn't understand the, the mechanics of uh, movies, the physics of bo movie production. So um, we fired him and uh, got a new lawyer, and who's Clint's lawyer still today, Bruce Raymer. And, um, and we made the deal, and then we went and we made the movie. And Clint used to... People used to say to him, well, what are you doing? He said, I don't know, I'm making a movie with some 12-year-old kid. And, uh, you know, and when you talk to him, you have to look up because he's so tall. And, um, and then it was the best experience I've ever had making a movie. Then and now in, in the future, I don't anticipate ever again such an experience because I had written the screenplay, it was original, I shot it exactly as I planned it. Uh, I did all the scouting and the art directing myself. And um, 
I would ask Clint every single night. I said, Clint, are you happy with, are you happy with the footage? And he said, Michael, you just keep putting, quote, and he was a producer. This was the first Mal Paso production when he formed Mal Paso um, uh, Productions. And uh, he said, you just keep putting your vision on the screen. He said, you have a unique way of getting scope into a movie. He said, I've worked with so many directors, which he had, he said, and I've worked with the best of them in, in the most beautiful places in the West. He said, and you, never, you would never know uh, where you are. It might have as well have been shot in Burbank on the back lot because they don't know how to put scope on the screen. They don't know how to shoot a mountain. And as John Ford used to speak about that, you know, there's, a certain, there's certain distances where you need to be at in order to capture the majesty of a, of a mountain. And, and there's a certain kind of physics to it, to it all. And it's all, you know, in your head. You either have it or you don't have it. Um, some, some movies, like for example, Man of La Mancha, the movie musical was shot all in Spain, but you have no idea you're in Spain. Spain is one of the most beautiful countries in the world, but when you look at that movie, you have no idea. It might as well have been shot in, in the back lot in Hollywood. And that's what Clint was referring to. He said, somehow you have this ability to get, you know, the place on the screen. And I don't know where that comes from, perhaps from my background in architecture, I don't know. And um, he didn't change one shot. He didn't change one line. He didn't change one single thing. Even on the editing, he never, he didn't change a single cut. And that never happened after that. And Joanne said to me, um, at one point, she said, Michael, you better remember this experience very well because it will never happen again. It will never be as good as this. And boy, was she right.